Welcome back. In the second half of this lecture, we're going to do some more examples using the rational zero theorem to help us factor polynomial functions. A couple of notes, though, before we get into this. The first part is, again, a reminder that the rational zero theorem is only giving us a list of possible rational zeros, rational numbers, things that could be written as fractions. That means that there might be polynomials out there where the rational zero theorem might not help out. So for example, uh, something like the x squared minus 2 that I have there, there are no rational zeros for that function. If you were to solve where does it cross the x-axis, it crosses at positive root of 2 and negative root of 2, and those are not rational numbers. The rational zero theorem will not give you either of those two numbers. The other place to be careful is that it won't apply to every polynomial. Something like f of x being x to the 5 plus 0.7x plus 1, the rational zero theorem doesn't apply because you have coefficients that are not integers. Or even this, g of x, x to the 4 plus root of 2x plus 3, uh, minus 3. Another coefficient that's, again, not a rational number, well then the rational zero theorem does not apply. One other little fact to keep in mind is that there is a limit to how many factors a polynomial can have. So if you have a polynomial of degree n, then at most you can have n real zeros. That's it, which means that at most there will be n different factors. So if I hand you, for example, a, a polynomial of degree 5, then at most there would be five different factors potentially fewer. Uh, a nice little fact for any polynomial is that you can factor it into either a combination of linear factors or quadratic factors that can't be factored any further, and we call those irreducible quadratic factors. Something like x squared plus 1, that doesn't factor any further, or x squared plus x plus 1, that also doesn't factor any further. So that means that if you have anything higher than degree 2, then there's still definitely some more factoring that can be done. So if you have a polynomial of degree 3 or degree 4 or degree 5, there definitely is something that you'll be able to do. You'll be able to write it as smaller degree polynomials multiplied together. So that's our overall goal here, is to factor our polynomial, write it as linear factors. Maybe if there's an irreducible quadratic, then maybe there is, and if not, then there isn't. One thing just to note here about which quadratics are irreducible and which aren't, this comes back to, uh, again, the discriminant. Remember that when something has a negative discriminant and it's quadratic, that would be something that doesn't have any x-intercepts. So for both of these, if you were to look at what is the discriminant, for both of them it's negative, and that's because for both of them they don't cross the x-axis. There are no zeros for x squared plus 1 or for x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, so we want to factor this polynomial completely, and it's a nice cubic polynomial, so we know that it's going to. Um, first, we're going to start off thinking about the rational zero theorem and what are the possible rational zeros. Thinking about the factors of the leading coefficient, things that go into 2, there's 1 and 2. Things that go into 6, there's 1, 2, 3, and 6. For all of these, it's plus or minus, because of course, positive or negative 1, positive or negative 2, all of those numbers go into 2. But I'm not going to write down the, the plus or minus here. I'm just going to write the plus or minus down when I actually list my rational zeros. So my possible rational zeros Remember that it's a factor of your constant term over a factor of your leading coefficient. So we could have plus or minus 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 1, 6 over 1, 1 over 2, 2 over 2, 3 over 2, and 6 over 2. 
One thing that often happens with the rational zero theorem is that there's a little bit of duplication. Uh, so for example, plus or minus 2 over 2, that's the same thing as plus or minus 1, which we already had on our list. Plus or minus 6 over 2 is the same thing as plus or minus 3, which again, we already have on our list. So if I wanted to write out my rational zeros, uh, a more compact list would be plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 6, 1 half, and 3 halves. The other two numbers, the 2 over 2 and the 6 over 2, those are just repeats of what we saw earlier. So this is it. This is my entire list of potential rational zeros for this polynomial. And so now I just need to test to find out which ones have to be, which ones actually are. And so I usually start out with the easier numbers and I would make my way up to the less pleasant numbers later on. So um, I'm not going to start out by testing three halves or one half. I'm going to start with the easier numbers, ones and twos, and then I'll move on to threes and sixes. And if I have to, halves and three halves, making my way from the nicer smaller, easier whole numbers to messier fractions and bigger numbers later on if needs be. So now let's see if any of these actually are zeros. So f of 1, we evaluate what is the value when we put 1 into our function. And I found that the value when I put 1 into my function <coughs> is negative 6. So that means that x minus 1 is not a factor. Remember that the remainder of the theorem tells us that if f of whatever were 0, then that means we've located an x-intercept. We've located a 0 of our polynomial. And if it's not equal to 0, then it's not an x-intercept. It's not a 0 of your polynomial. So since f of 1 is negative 6, then x minus 1 is not a factor f of negative 1, that was 12, so that means x plus 1 is not a factor. Let's try 2 next. f of 2, that was negative 12, so that means x minus 2 is also not a factor. Let's try f of negative 2. When I put negative 2 into my polynomial, I got that it was equal to 0. So that means that x plus 2 is a factor. So now we've confirmed there definitely is at least one factor for this polynomial, at least one real 0. So let's actually do the division now. So our polynomial... 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 6, and we were dividing by x plus 2, so we're using a negative 2 here. And then we just need to, again, do our usual synthetic division. And again, this confirms what we expected. We expected a remainder of 0. And so our quotient then we found is 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. So f of x factors as our factor of x plus 2 times our quotient 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. And you could continue on now with this smaller polynomial, continuing with your list of checking to see what do you get when you put in 3 or 6 or a half or 3 halves into that smaller polynomial. Because one thing that's also kind of nice here about our rational zero theorem, if you have something that's a zero of the entire polynomial, then it should be a zero after you've factored something out of that polynomial. So, for example, if x minus 6 were a zero for this big polynomial, then that means that x minus 6 should come out of the what's left over of this polynomial. In other words, we don't have to go back and revise our list of possible rational zeros. Anybody that might be a rational zero of this smaller polynomial 
would have to be a rational zero of the whole thing. So we only need to continue testing along with the rational zeros from our original list. And of course, you don't even have to do that if what you've got is a small enough polynomial for you to be able to factor by hand. Uh, namely here, this 2x squared minus 7x plus 3, that's something that you could do a little bit of factoring uh, with, and it's not too terribly hard to do. Looking for numbers that multiply to positive 6 and add to negative 7. That's negative 6 and negative 1 and then factoring by grouping after that. One thing to note here, now that I've factored it, we find that there are three real zeros. The negative two that we found, there's also three, and there's also one half. And if you take a look at our list, indeed, 3 and 1 half, those were on our list. So if we had continued on using the rational zero theorem uh, and testing them with the remainder theorem, we would have found them by hand anyhow. But that's the nice thing. If you have factoring skills, you might as well use them. And so here, instead of me continuing to do things by division, I instead did things just by factoring. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit more work. This is a degree 5 polynomial, which means that I'm going to have to do quite a bit of factoring until I can get to the point where I could maybe factor by hand. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind here is that since it's a degree 5 polynomial, that once I factor something out of it, then I'll have what's left over will be degree 4. And then when I factor something out of it, what's left over will be something of degree 3. And if I factor something out of that, then what's left over will be something of degree 2, which I can maybe then factor by hand using my, my skills for factoring quadratics. So that means that we will have to, for at least a while, be using that rational zero theorem. And to start with, our rational zero theorem tells us that there's some potential rational zeros for this polynomial. Factors for 3 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, and factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. So that means that possible rational zeros... are plus or minus 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 1, 6 over 1, as well as plus or minus 1 over 3, 2 over 3, 3 over 3, and 6 over 3. And some of those, again, are duplicates. 3 over 3 is the same thing as 1, which we've already got on our list. And 6 over 3 is the same thing as 2, which we already have on our list. So really, this is the list of rational zeros. 1, 2, 3, 6, 1 thirds, and 2 thirds, plus or minus for everyone. So let's get ourselves going here, and let's start by testing and we'll go for our first one. What about the value of 1? So 3 times 1 to the 5 minus 10 times 1 to the 4 plus 4 times 1 cubed minus 4 times 1 squared plus 1 plus 6 and then all I need to do is run that through my calculator and it gives me a value of zero. So good for us. That means that x minus 1 is a factor. And let's do that factoring. And we do that by carrying out synthetic division. So multiplying, adding, multiplying, adding, multiplying, adding, multiplying, adding, 
multiplying and adding. And again, this confirms what we expected. Our remainder was zero, which we were expecting to see since h of one was zero. And that our quotient, 3x to the 4 minus 7x cubed minus 3x squared minus 7x minus 6. So that means h of x is now written as x minus 1, our factor, multiplied by our quotient. All right. So now, to continue on, what we're going to do is to continue testing our rational zeros, but instead of evaluating our original function, h of x, at 1 and at 2 and at 3 and so on, we're going to be evaluating the quotient, that degree 4 polynomial, at those values of 1, 2, 3, 6, and so on. I know that I've already taken 1 out. x minus 1 was a factor because 1 was a 0, but it's possible that you might have a repeated factor or a repeated root. So I'm going to check to see, I'll start off with this, is 1 a 0 of that as well? What happens if I were to put 1 in for x? And the answer there was it's not zero. So that means I'm not going to have another x minus one coming out. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to test to see some other factors looking at minus one. And that's not zero either. And I tried the same thing with two. And that wasn't zero. And then I tried negative two. And that wasn't zero. And then I try 3. This is the only problem with factoring this way, is just it takes a little bit of trial and error to eventually find a factor that will work. And there's no easy way to guess or tell in advance which of my list will be the actual rational zeros. I just have to try them one at a time until I, I find one that works. So just going methodically through my list, I tried 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2, and then when I tried 3, 3 worked. When I put in 3 for x, that did give me equal to 0, so that means I should be able to take out another factor. So my quotient that I've had, that degree 4 polynomial, I'm dividing it by x minus 3, and I'm doing that by synthetic division. So my remainder is 0, and my quotient is 3x cubed plus 2x squared, plus 3x, plus 2. All right. So now all we need to do is continue on. So a couple of things, just to circle back again. We had our original list, plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 6, and so on. We've already ruled out at this point 1. We've ruled out negative 1, positive 2, and negative 2. So that means that if we decided to continue on using the rational zero theorem for this smaller polynomial, I don't need to use 1 or negative 1 or 2 or negative 2 because we've already ruled them out. If 1 is not a zero of the whole thing, then it can't be a zero of this smaller factor. So that means that we basically just need to continue along on our list. We would continue along testing to see is 3 a repeated root, and if it's not, then moving on to 6, negative 6, and so on.
The other thing to also keep in mind here is that if there's a possibility that you could factor without using this theorem, that you should. Uh, and that's the thing that I'm noticing here, that what's left over this little cubic function that I have, that it is something that looks like it should factor by grouping. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to add an extra page, and then I'm going to factor it by grouping. So I have that h of x... was x minus 1, x minus 3, times 3x cubed, 2x squared, 3x plus 2. And I can see that, yes, I should be able to do some factoring by grouping here, taking x squared out of the first two terms, and a positive 1 out of the last two terms. So I'll have 3x plus 2 and x squared plus 1. And the x squared plus 1, that's not going to factor any further. That's an irreducible quadratic. So there we go. We've factored h of x as far as we can. It has three real zeros, 1, 3, and negative 2 thirds. Those are the places where we cross the x-axis. And we also had another factor, but that does not give us any real numbers for the zeros. All right, let's do another one. So g of x, looking again at our list of possible rational zeros here, things that go into 6, 1, 2, 3, and 6, things that go into 4, 1, 2, and 4. And so if we're listing our possible rational zeros, we have plus or minus 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 4 over 1, 1 over 2, 2 over 2, 4 over 2, 1 third, two-thirds, four-thirds, and one-sixth, two-sixths, and four-sixths. And a lot of this, a lot, a lot, a lot of these are duplicates. So namely, you can see that we've got two-sixths and one-third, that those are the same, so we don't really need those. 4 sixths and 2 thirds, those are the same, so we don't really need the 4 sixths. 2 over 2 is the same thing as 1, so we don't need it. 4 over 2 is the same thing as 2, so we don't need it. Which means that if we're giving our actual list here of rational zeros that we'll be testing, we have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. Then there's a half a third, two-thirds, four-thirds, and one-sixth. It's still a fairly long list, but it's not as long as it could be. Now, again, the thing to note here, it's a degree three polynomial, which means that at most we're going to have three factors, which means that at most only three of these numbers will be zeros for g of x. So there's a long list here. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 different possible rational zeros, but for sure at least 13 of them will not work. So I guess we better get on our, our way with testing them one at a time. So I'll go through my list, and I did all of this work earlier, evaluating g of 1. That was negative 18. That's not 0, so nope. Uh, g of negative 1, that was negative 20, which is also not 0. How about 2? Well, that gave me something that was also not 0. Negative 2 gave me something else that was also not 0. But finally, g of 4, when I put 4 in, that did give me 0. So that means that x minus 4 is a factor.
So there we go. That that was a lot of testing to see. We had to test quite a few things before we got to one that works and four should work. So let's just confirm that now by doing our division. So reminder again that what we'll be doing is synthetic division. And we were dividing by x minus four. And then we just multiply and add and multiply and add. And yes, as I expected, my remainder is zero. And so my quotient, 6x squared plus x plus, uh, 6x squared plus x minus 1. So that means that g of x, we've now factored it as our factor x minus 4 times that quotient. And at that point, what's left over is a nice little quadratic, and that I can factor by hand. I'm looking for numbers that multiply together to give me negative 6 and add together to give me positive 1. That would be positive 3 and negative 2. And then just factoring by grouping. And we can see that the zeros that we have for this, uh, for this polynomial, 4, negative 1 half, and positive 1 third. And indeed, negative 1 half and positive 1 third were on our list. We would have eventually got to them. Uh, so if we had continued along with using the rational zero theorem, eventually we would have found them. But again, we're going to go with the more efficient way of doing things. So once I got to the point that it's a quadratic, I know I can factor those by hand, so I do. Okay, so one last thing that I want to do here, and, and now this is using my factoring skills to help me graph a polynomial. Um, so before we get into the graphing of this polynomial, one thing that I'm going to just talk about would be the y-intercept, because we can read that directly off the function. Remember that the y-coordinate for the y-intercept is just the constant, which is positive 3, so the y-intercept is 0, 3. And also the leading term tells us the end behavior So our graph should do the same thing that 2x to the 4 should do, which is go up on the far right and go up on the far left. So those are two little bits of things that I can do without having to do any factoring. The other part that I'll need would be my x-intercepts and the behavior at them. And so that's where I will need to now factor this polynomial. Uh, and so thinking about this using the rational zero theorem, we have that for zeros of this polynomial, they would all be made out of factors of the constant term, 1 or 3, over factors of the leading coefficient, which are 1 or 2. So possible rational zeros we have plus or negative 1 over 1, 3 over 1, 1 over 2, and 3 over 2. So not really a lot of possible rational zeros here, only 8 things for us to test, which that's not too bad. So let's start off with checking positive 1. So positive 1, when I put that into my polynomial, That gave me negative 8, so that's not 0, which means that x minus 1 is not a factor. Let's try negative 1. Negative 1 
And when I calculate that, that is equal to zero, which means that x plus one is a factor. And so now to figure out what we have as a quotient, we need to take my polynomial, 2x to the 4 minus 3x cubed minus 9x squared minus x plus 3, and we're dividing it by x plus 1. So using a negative 1. And now we just need to multiply and add, as always, So my remainder is zero as I expected, and my quotient that I just found, that was 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 3. Okay, so I'm going to add an extra page here because I think I'll need one. So what we've just found now is that f of x has been factored as x plus 1 times that quotient. 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 3. And just to circle back, two things. Number one, Again, we're still going to be using our list of rational zeros. We've already ruled out 1 as a rational 0, so I won't need to test it again. Negative 1, it was a 0. It's possibly a repeated 0, so we will still test it again. But the other part was that instead of testing it in the original polynomial, we'll test it in that quotient to see if it's a factor of that quotient. So let's see what happens if I put negative 1 in for x into that. And when I put negative 1 in for x for that, that gives me oh, 0. That turns out rather nicely. So that means that there's a repeated root. x plus 1 was a factor out of the whole polynomial, and x plus 1 can also be factored out of this quotient. So let's do that. So again, as always, bringing down, then multiplying, adding, multiplying, adding, multiplying, adding. As we expected, our remainder is zero. And so our quotient, 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. So f of x could be factored as x plus 1 times another x plus 1 times 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. And then that last little quadratic that we have here, you can factor that by hand. And I'm going to, to skip that step of factoring it by hand, because we've done enough of those already. But when you factor it by hand, it does factor out as x minus 3 times 2x minus 1. Which means, as far as x-intercepts go, we have negative 1, 0, where we're going to touch the x-axis. We have 3, 0, where we're going to cross the x-axis. And we have 1 half, 0, and that's going to be where we also cross the x-axis. So now we just need to put in all of our clues. We had our y-intercept of 3. We had our end behavior up on both sides. We know that there's 3x-intercepts at negative 1, 3, and a half. So let's put it all together. So our y-intercept was at 0, 3. Our x-intercepts were at 3 and a half and at negative 1. And I'll label things afterwards, but one thing that we know is that it's supposed to go up on the far right and up on the far left. We're supposed to cross at 3, and of course we'll have to make our way back to get to that x-intercept at a half.
we're supposed to cross at a half, which makes sense because we have to make our way up to get to that y-intercept, and we'll have to make our way back down to get to the next x-intercept, and then as expected, we did touch, not cross, at x being negative 1. So there we go, I'll label that point as 1 half 0, and I'm going to label my polynomial in factored form, x plus 1 squared, x minus 3, 2x minus 1. And there we go, that's a, a sketch of my polynomial.